You want my fingers through here? Yes. Straight back. Yeah. Taking care of Bailey has taken more of a toll on our relationship than I thought it would have. This routine goes on seven days a week, 365 days a year. My day typically starts at about 5 a.m. Right when we wake up, we'll hold each other. I'll rub on his head, then I'll get up. Then I cath Bailey, and that means I empty out his bladder, and then I get the bag and I clean it in the bathroom. I'm gonna move this, sorry. Right. Getting dressed takes a little bit. I can open up these ones, okay? By this point, Bailey's stomach is really hurting. The only thing that he can get down is a nutritional drink. He'll probably have about one of these a day. When Bailey's taken care of, that's when I'll try to take my me time and I'll go have a cup of coffee. As his caregiver, I'm the one that's responsible for making sure he gets his medicine, one for spasms, one for pain, and nausea. You pick a beat, then you can add the bass sense. Bailey spends most of his day uh, just chilling at the house, playing with his dog. He loves movies. That's the way he distracts himself. All right, let's go. When I'm leaving, I have to make sure the cath bag is packed, the jelly, the um, catheters, the bag. I'm letting down the ramp right now. Bailey will roll in if I make sure he's secured. It's very exhausting. It's a lot worse when I feel like I don't have the support and compassion from Bailey. Typically, if Bailey and I have dinner, it'll be at about six o'clock. Cooking, it's exhausting. It's not only her cooking all the food, but it's then her also having to feed both of us. They have guacamole and stuff in there if you want me to put it on it. And then clean everything up. So it's easier just to make a ham sandwich. By about 8.30, we're both pretty spent, and that starts the process of getting him in bed. I pick him up, get him in bed, I'll undress him, position him, and I try to at least kiss him goodnight. But there are some nights where we just get on each other's nerves, and I'm just like, you know what? I love you. Taking care of Bailey has definitely taken a toll. I haven't had a full night's sleep in three years. Okay, so even if you knew then that you were gonna hit this rust spot here where you were frustrated, exhausted, uh, felt unappreciated, worried, and being called names, spit on, uh, all the things that happen when there's frustration, you would still have moved forward. I would have moved forward. I would have gotten better help, better guidelines. Okay. Now, you say that he is extremely angry all the time. Extremely. At you or just at his situation, circumstance, he what? He is angry at everything, his situation, me, the people he, <clears throat> that have claimed to be in his life. He's mm -hmm. been angry with his family. He's, he's just angry. One of my areas of specialization when I did practice was in what's called behavioral medicine, which had a lot to do with chronic disease management. And my specialty within that was brain and central nervous system. So I've dealt with this kind of situation a lot. And I'm guessing that he feels like he's a huge burden and that everybody in his life would be better off if he wasn't there. Not so much that he would be better off if he was dead, but everybody else would be better off if he was just gone. He hates himself so much. He has told me he wants me to help him go into a nursing home. Is there a part of you that would feel really guilty leaving him? Of course, I would feel, you know, very guilty leaving him. But Bailey and I have talked about that. He has made very clear, do not stick around just to take care of me. Do not stick around just so I don't go into a nursing home or so I don't die. If you want to leave, you go. And I have told him, <clears throat> when I am ready to go, I will go. But that's just words. You don't really feel that way, do you? you? You feel like if you would leave, that you would be selfish, hedonistic, you would feel like you had betrayed him and let him down. 100%.